ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you to Bergen, the second largest city in Norway, with a population of about 280,000 inhabitants. And it used to be actually the capital city of Norway back in the 13th century. Although at the time it wasn't a capital per se, but rather the crown seat of the king. And on the left hand side, we are now passing by the old Bergenhuis fortress, the old royal residence. And we can see a historical building from the 13th century, just on the left. This um, uh, a Romanesque style hall called Hokus Hall, named after the king uh, in the 13th century. Uh, and this king uh, ruled in, in Norway. And here we have the Rosenkrantz Tower to the left. I'll tell you in a moment more about it. Uh, he ruled in, in, in Norway when Bergen was actually at its peak. It was very prosperous. Uh, so he actually hired masons and architects from the British Isles to build him a stone hall, which sort of was a sign of power. We also see here on the right-hand side uh, this um, tall ship called Stadtrad Lehmkühl, which is a sailing school uh, that has been recently on a world trip around the world. Um, and that recently returned. And the Rosenkrantz Tower also dates from the 13th century, also built under Hokun Hokunson, but in the 16th century renovated by the governor of Bergen, Erik Rosenkrantz, and therefore bears his name. Now here on the left-hand side, we are passing this uh, iconic landmark of Bergen, uh, the wooden houses of Priggen. And this is where we're going to walk later, so I'm going to tell you all about it. For now, I'm just mentioning that this is a UNESCO site, and it's a very, very beautiful place that is very dear to the people of Bergen. And as we are just driving here on the pier, we can see on the right-hand side the city bay, called simply Vogen, which simply translates to the bay. And we notice quite a lot of um, private boats docked um, in the uh, on, on the pier and that's actually not very usual it's because the celebration of 17th of May is approaching and this is where people will celebrate and they come with their boats to the city so many of them have come a few days ahead to make sure that they will have a docking spot because um, uh, it's um, Quite, um, quite an event to come to, uh, to celebrate the 17th of May, the National Day, but also it is quite um, fancy to use your own private boat to join the celebrations in the city instead of coming by car. So on a regular basis, the bay is rather empty. You see a few boats docked, but nothing like today. And the more we get closer to the 17th of May, the more packed the bay gets. We are now passing by the fish market, which is a very popular place to try um, some of the local cuisine, as fish and seafood has always been a part of the Norwegian cuisine. And this is now just um, open during the summertime. In winter, we have an empty square here, maybe a few stands with some street food, but it's not so colorful and joyful as it is in the summertime when uh, visitors come from all over the world to experience Norway and the fjords. And since Bergen is the gateway to the fjords, this is a popular destination. Here on the right hand side, we have the tourist information center. And on the upper floor, we have the, uh, the on the lower floor, we have the indoor fish market, which is open all year round, but it's not as popular as the one open air. And here we have a boat terminal for the express boats that can take you to those set beautiful fjords since Bergen is the gateway. And on the right hand side, if you just look across the bay, you have a beautiful panoramic view over Bricken, the colorful wooden houses. And um, it's uh, simply amazing that you've managed to come to Bergen on a sunny day. I think you've heard the rumors that uh, Bergen is known for a lot of rainfall. Um, an average of um, 260, uh, 260 days of rain uh, every year. Um, but, this, but this is sort of a little bit of an overstatement because if we have half an hour of 
of rain in a day, that is considered a rainy day. So maybe the rest of the day might be, uh, if not sunny, at least dry. But if it rains for half an hour, it's considered a rainy day. On the right hand side, you can see the uh, old house of the governor, Eric Rosenkrantz, the one who restored the medieval tower and um, called it after himself. So he was a very wealthy nobleman from Denmark. Uh, that was the time, in the 16th century, when Norway was in a union with Denmark and it was ruled by the Danish king. And the Danish king sent this uh, wealthy nobleman to Bergen to protect the city and to keep an eye on the expanding influence of the German Merchants League, of the, Hans, of the German Hanseatic League, which had established a trading office uh, already in the 14th century. And they were considered sort of an economical and even political threat in the northern countries. So, Eddie Rosenkrantz um, came here in Bergen and um, he decided to restore that old medieval keep and to place cannons on top of the tower facing the city fjord where any enemy vessels might come in but also towards Brigham. Not to really shoot but as a warning to show who is in power. We are now passing behind the theater on the left hand side. This is um, called the Nationale Scene, the national stage. It's the Norwegian, the first Norwegian theater established in 1850 by the violinist virtuoso Ulebu. The original theater built in 1850, was located here on the left-hand side, a little bit further down. But it burned out because it was built out of wood. So this stone theater was built in 1909. On the right-hand side, you might notice a rather um, uh, odd-looking building and we think, since we are used to charming architecture here in Bergen. That building uh, was the public swimming pool uh, until it was closed down in the 90s um, when uh, the larger swimming pool arena called Ado Arena was opened. So it was used for many years uh, as the um, display exhibition place for the gingerbread city, which is uh, the biggest gingerbread city in the world. But Gensers, they uh, baked their own gingerbread houses and buildings and they donated to the exhibition and artists put everything together creating a very charming and very good smelling uh, hall and city which is visited then in uh, the months of November and December by all Bergensers. We are now driving uh, on the Hokuns street and Hokun is a very popular name. It comes from Old Norse and it means uh, the eldest son and many kings have had this name throughout the centuries on the right hand side you can see Johannes church which is in fact the tallest church in Bergen not only because it is located on a hill but also because it is uh, from the bottom to the uh, top of the spire the tallest church in the city it's built in a neo-gothical style and although on the outside it has uh, brick uh, the interior is wooden, as it is traditionally in Norway to build everything out of wood. And it's a Protestant Lutheranic church, since this is the religion, official religion in Norway. We are now uh, passing uh, the academical uh, part of the city. The university area is uh, situated on this hill that uh, is on the right hand side. So Bergen is the second largest university city after Oslo and most of the institutes are here and also a lot of students live here but the student housing are in another place, we'll see them. And the Catholic Church of St. Paul was on the right hand side. Um, so since um, Protestantism is the official religion, we have two Catholic church, churches in the city uh, because the Catholic community has actually increased a lot in the last years because of immigration. 
Now, on the left-hand side, we see a very beautiful and um, interesting-looking building. It's built in the shape of a grand piano. You might be able to see that better when we'll be on top of the mountain. And there's a tiny statue on the square. You might have overlooked it, and that's okay, because it is uh, really small, and it's actually a natural-sized statue of the famous Norwegian composer Edvard Grieg because this is Greek Hallen with a uh, music hall, concert hall, that pays homage to one of most beloved son of Bergen. Edvard Grieg uh, was born here on the 15th of June, 1843, and he was um, one of the most beloved Norwegian composers who really sort of um, reforged a national identity through his art and music he was especially interested in uh, <clears throat> making uh, people more familiar with the charming Norwegian folks' music. Greek Hallen was opened in 1979, and it is the headquarter of one of the oldest philharmonic orchestras in the world, the Philharmonic Orchestra Harmonien, established in the 1700s. And Edvard Grieg was also director for a few years. He was uh, born here in Bergen, as I said, and his father was a wealthy businessman and a British consul, and his mother was a piano teacher. So at a young age, he already had access to music, and his family uh, was uh, able to send him later to a very good music academy in Leipzig, in Germany, at the insistences of the uh, famous, uh, previously mentioned violinist virtuoso, Ule Bull. You see, Edvard Grieg was already very talented as a child, composing his own small uh, musical compositions. And um, Ule Bull, who was uh, well known, uh, visited the family at some point and heard little Edvard Grieg play, and he was so impressed that he uh, made it very clear that uh, such a talent shouldn't be wasted, that he would have to go to study at the best music academy there was, and that was in Leipzig. On the left-hand side, you might notice some tracks. Uh, this is the track, these are the tracks of the light rail, b Bahnen, that connects the city center with the most southern suburbia of Bergen, and goes even further, all the way to the airport. Bergen is now a rather long city, stretches for kilometers, and it's one of the best connections we have here for transport. On the left-hand side, you can see where the city fjord actually ends. Uh, it ends in a rather broad bay that looks like a lake. So we call it Lille Lung, uh, Sture Lunge Gortsvar, the large um, uh, farm lake, so to speak. And in the background, we have the Mount Ulriken, which is the highest of the seven mountains. You might have heard this expression, Bergen, the city of the seven mountains. Well, Ulriken is the mightiest, meters high, and there is a cable car, a uh, gondol, going up to the summit. And this neighborhood we are driving now through um, features now a lot of modern architecture and uh, especially apartments on the waterfront are very expensive not only because of the great view but also because private boat in front rear doorstep which is something that a lot of Norwegian aspire to as the Norwegian dream is to have a cabin in the mountains if you can afford it even have a summer house somewhere by the seaside but definitely have a boat because sailing is one of the most traditional um, things uh, here in a country that uh, has a very long coastline and the ancestors are the Vikings, very much renowned seafarers and explorers and builders. You will see actually the light rail in a few moments on the left hand side. It's uh, orange and white, it's electrified of course and um, it's um, about 16 kilometers outside Bergen, as it wasn't easy finding a flat place in a city surrounded by mountains. I just need to find them.
So we are now driving on the street named after a great Norwegian um, playwright. His name was Henrik Ibsen, who was also a very good friend of Edvard Grieg. And uh, they collaborated uh, for the creation of a masterpiece that is still nowadays known for both of them. You see, Henrik Ibsen wrote a play called Per Gunt story of a young farmer's boy who goes out into the world um, but he's a bit reckless and uh, makes one mistake after another uh, he leaves his sweetheart behind crying waiting for him for years he almost marries a troll girl uh, being chased by the trolls from the mountain it's a satire but also a um, moral story that uh, sometimes you should just be content with that what you have at home. In any case, Edward Grieg composed music for this uh, play, and it was one of the first musicals uh, created. And the music is so popular that often songs from this are used as a soundtrack uh, in movies and, and cartoons. I'm pretty sure you are familiar with at least one of the songs, because whenever you want to create sort of a feeling of tension uh, or sort of like suspense like uh, building up the tension you can use this uh, song so I'm just going to hum it a little bit for you just to see if you maybe recognize it <coughs> does it sound familiar oh, yeah. <laughs> So now we can also see on the left-hand side the, some of the buildings of the Haukeland Hospital, which is one of the largest hospitals in Norway, and for sure the biggest hospital in this region, which we call Hordaland. It is also a university hospital, and they are specialized on treating burned victims. Uh, and this comes from the fact that um, there hasn't been uh, before uh, 1985, when this uh, um, section was opened, a uh, special unit for treating burned victims. So if there was um, serious injuries, especially with the advent of the oil and gas industry, they had, the victims had to be sent abroad in order to get treatment. So then um, it was seen as a necessity to uh, get a specialized unit, uh, unit here and it has become one of the best in Europe. So now a lot of other countries from Europe send their burn victims to the Haukeland Hospital because they know that the doctors here are simply the best. And they also have research facilities so uh, it's um, quite a um, uh, good and well equipped hospital. We are now driving through uh, part of the city called Landos and we can see a lot of houses and apartments. So we see sort of a mix of architectural styles because we see some traditional houses but also some more modern apartment buildings but not very high, not very tall, maximum three floors and uh, they uh, still have a little bit of sort of space in front of them like a garden because Norwegians, they, we don't really like high-rise buildings and uh, apartments where people feel like they are cramped. So even if you live in an apartment, you still want to feel like you are kind of living in a house. And this was farmland, not even a hundred years ago. Uh, so the, this development, this urban uh, development uh, has happened mostly after the Second World War 
as also Norway's economy was steadily increasing. Norway used to be a rather poor country, uh, but steadily it increased its GDP. And then with the oil and gas industry in the uh, uh, 1969, uh, Norway was catapulted in a new era of wealth. But if we look at pictures of Bergen from 100 years ago, or even from the 20s, then we would see here in London, meadows, forests, and here and there a few farms, but also beautiful houses that belong to the upper class who wanted to move a little bit outside Bergen area, or at least during the holidays, because Bergen city center was quite packed and there were often many fires. So even the Greek family had a summer house on one of the hillsides. And this is where uh, Ule Bull came to visit the family when he discovered Edvard Greek. And I also have to tell you that Edvard Greek, before going to Leipzig, he was visit going to a local school and he really disliked it because he wanted to stay at home and play the piano and compose music. It's not that he didn't like to have to, 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 to learn, but his teachers and classmates would often mock him, and they call him the little composer, but also his nickname used to be Mozak. And that's because he would never say anything during class. He was always very quiet. He, he was thinking about his music. But one time, the teacher asks, who was the composer that who was is the who is the composer that uh, wrote the requiem? And everybody was like, never heard of it. For the first time, Edward Greek lifted up his hand and he.